I hope you guys like watching horror movies because today on Signal Ridge we're counting down my top 10 favorite movies to watch during Halloween. Number 10, The People Under the Stairs. This movie is creepy AF, and it is not because of the zombie-like mutants that live within the walls and in the basement. It's because of the ma and pa in this house of incestuous whores. Yeah, you heard right. The parents that live in this house are brother and sister, and they are seriously fucked up in the head. Big one! <laughs> Do what he called. He called you a fool. Props to the practical effects team and makeup artists who somehow managed to make this bitch terrifying despite going with the minimalist approach. Although maybe that honor should go to the screenplay writers or the acting ability of Wendy Robbie. I wonder what she looks like in real life. Huh. I still can't shake the terrifying image of her wielding a butcher knife. Number 9, John Carpenter's The Thing. Imagine there are aliens walking amongst us disguised as humans. If you're a fan of Alex Jones and Infowars, that might not be such a stretch. More importantly, imagine that you're forced to hunker down in close quarters with said aliens because it's negative 42 degrees outside. I know you young whippersnappers would be quick to denigrate such cinematic wonders of yesteryear, but I happen to think that the special effects from this film are top notch. Clear. Okay, second notch. Okay, fine, they're shit. I'm getting old. Number eight, Hellraiser. Oh man, you want to talk shitty yet satisfying special effects? This is the film. The plot is, well, weird. Some guy purchases a demonic Rubik's Cube, to, which subsequently opens the gates of hell. Why? Because he likes roughing it up in the bedroom and he wants to experience what true pleasure is. I feel very uncomfortable talking about this. I know it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't have to. Why? Because of Nailface, I mean Penhead, who basically looks like a BDSM fanatic who became the patient of a carpenter attempting his first lobotomy. That's an apt description. I feel like they should use that on the synopsis of their next sequel. Number seven, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Is it though? Because I'm pretty sure like a dozen sequels came out after this. Spoiler alert, there is nothing final about this. I mean, Jason Goes to Hell, which was five movies later, wasn't even the final act. And that sounds like the end of the road, right? Guess again. It was Jason Goes to Space. But they knew they couldn't sell that shit, so they called it Jason X. Why? Probably because they were trying to capitalize on the trend of artists using the power of the alphabet to improve their rapper alias. But this film was not the hip-hop debut of Jason Voorhees. It was his introduction to steroids. Wasn't I supposed to be talking about another movie? Fuck it, moving on. Number six, Poltergeist. You wanna terrify a child growing up in the 80s? Show him a movie where a kid gets swallowed by a fucking demon tree. Or sucked into the vortex of a giant wall vagina. the guy that wrote this crap and and what drugs is he on because that's the specific drugs we need to start cracking down on seriously though i rewatched this movie last night and i had nightmares about fat ass anthropomorphic assassin trees trying to eat me i feel like the digital effects team from this movie wandered directly onto the set of ghostbusters for some reason and the practical effects artists definitely learned a thing or two from another film on this list <laughs> I'm not big on puns, but when I'm clever enough to come up with one, you better believe I'm putting that shit in here. 
Number five, the exorcist. Nothing is more terrifying than demonic possession. Except for a pandemic that threatens to bring the greatest economy of the world to its knees, or a presidential election where one of the candidates is secretly a pawn of a foreign power attempting to bring down the United States from within. Thank God none of that shit is real. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, little girl gets possessed by the devil. But fuck that. Number four, Nightmare on Elm Street. Two words, sticky stairs. Two more words, blood bed. Maybe more words are needed to fully understand the horrific nature of these scenes. Roll the tape. Fun fact, two cameras were nearly destroyed in the making of this film because they were completely saturated with fake blood made from corn syrup. I don't know why I know that. Apparently my brain just retains random ass information. Number three, Sleepy Hollow. You know what's depressing? The fact that retro describes anything that was relevant 20 years ago. That means a movie produced in 1999 qualifies for this list. And if you don't agree with that, thank you for making me feel younger, but you can kiss my ass because I'm including Sleepy Hollow in this list. This film is goddamn amazing, and Tim Burton is a master at making a movie that embodies the spirit of Halloween. I mean, the guy made Nightmare Before Christmas for Christ's sake. Which, by the way, is a movie I'm saving for another list. That neutral Tim Burton color palette really makes the blood stand out. <laughs> Number two, Halloween. The original too cool to be seen running but will still somehow catch your ass, Michael Myers, started it all. Apparently the OG slasher has teleportation abilities because you could be an Olympic athlete preparing for a triathlon and still not outrun this motherfucker. But that's what I love. I don't want the laws of physics seeping into my favorite horror flicks. I've got Event Horizon for that, which by the way I'm saving for another list. Before I get to my number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You, you Hello. I said, talk to me, damn it. Or Number one, Bram Stoker's Dracula. The visuals are incredibly impressive and the horrors are haunting. Who knew an old ass Dracula living off social security in solitude could be so terrifying? <laughs> To my home. If you haven't seen this film, you need to check it out. I watch it religiously when this time of year rolls around. The video game based on this film, on the other hand, fuck that mess. Thank you guys for watching as always, and like a true soul-sucking social media vampire, I feed off the attention and affection of my viewers. 
So please leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And please tell your friends, tell your family, to hell with the algorithm. All I need is you guys. I'll catch you guys next time.